All right, so I'm going to be talking about zombies, vampires, and babies. Uh, my name is Joseph Lebrec, and you can follow me on Twitter at Joseph Lebrec. And basically my premise here is that your fear is misplaced. It's important to remember that I am an expert. I've studied the undead in high school. I have two daughters. Both were at one time babies. And I'm a published author, so you have to listen to what I say. First, zombies, or let's call them revenants, because zombies is sort of a loaded term. Revenant being this cabbage-headed guy here, animated corpse, rises from the dead to drink human blood. So zombies, I didn't want to really use that term, although I did when I submitted my topic, because that's the more familiar term to people. But zombies is an unrealistic situation because it involves many, many undead at once. Really, you only find one at a time. That's not reality. <laughs> vampires. So vampires, very similar to revenants, they subsist on attacking humans, uh, drinking their blood and so forth, and they're also undead. Then we have babies. So <laughs> baby, you can see here, you know, characteristic sort of enormous head, big bloated belly, um, you know, huge eyes, like really weird looking creatures. There are shared characteristics between all three of these creatures. They're all technically human in one way or another. <laughs> Babies are small humans and zombies and revenants are, are dead humans that have been animated. All survive by drinking off the fluid from other human beings. <laughs> So, normally this is done with a baby through milk, and the other two with blood. They're often blamed for spreading disease. In the Middle Ages, they would often blame revenants or vampires for spreading diseases in Europe. Today, we blame babies for spreading diseases <laughs> in municipal centers. They all bite. And anyone with a child knows this firsthand, that they bite very hard. <laughs> so, some similarities between different groups. Revenants and vampires both were at one time babies. So you can think of the baby as sort of like the larval stage of both of these creatures. <laughs> Revenants and babies communicate through a series of moans and cries. They also grapple and crawl. So very limited mobility in both, especially in winter seasons. <laughs> Vampires and babies. Both of these creatures employ hypnosis in order to lull their victims into feeding. And neither can cross moving water. <laughs> so how do you protect yourself from all three of these creatures? One way is to actually read up on the literature. There's a ton of literature in there, including my book, which you should all buy. Um, but there's tons of literature on all of these creatures. You can be aware of sleeping patterns. So zombies, or revenants rather, aren't really included in this because they just sort of stumble around aimlessly everywhere. But definitely babies and vampires have predefined sleeping patterns. Know your local hotspots. <laughs> So here, graveyards, abandoned churches, daycare centers, um, you know, hospital wards, um, things of that nature. Employ exorcism rituals. This is a time-proven method. It was used, you know, back in the Middle Ages. It's used even today on babies um, in certain religions. So if all that doesn't work, then there's a last resort which is decapitation and destruction of the heart. Before you do this though, note that it's generally illegal to defile a corpse or to murder a baby. The greatest danger of all three of these are definitely babies. Babies bite. Babies spread disease. Babies are everywhere. Have you ever seen a revenant? Have you ever seen a vampire? You see babies all over the place. So, last thoughts here, quote by Henry James, 
No one will ever know whether children are monsters or monsters are children. Thank you.